You are now tuned in to Mark, Mark After Dark. After Dark. Hi guys, welcome to the Mark After Dark, another episode. Man, I feel like season two has been kind of going by quickly, and it's crazy Very because quickly. it's just wow, you just kind of started. Yeah. But it is what it is. I mean, we're here. We're here, we're rocking. Yeah. We have a special guest in the building, Mr. Eli. Welcome to the Mark After Dark. Thank you. Thank you. Should I put these on? Sure. I mean, what's that, whatever you feel comfortable with. Gotcha. It's like the second time I'm asking. <laughs> I so, feel like you want to make sure the hair is right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. How does it look? It looks good. It looks Better good. With the headphones. Both ways. Look I mean, good. both ways are cool. Cool. So, just a disclaimer to all the guests, um, future guests. So, you can't see yourself on the show. Only I can see you. You won't see yourself until the preview is out. And it's kind of, I guess, shitty. Mm. But it's not my fault. I didn't, I didn't set up this, <laughs> set this up. But it is what it is. But welcome, Eli, to the Mark After Dark. Thank Eli, let the people know what you do. And um, yeah, how'd you like get started? Yeah. Uh, fair warning before I dive deep um or do a deep dive i mean uh my throat's a little scratchy so if my voice cracks throughout this entire segment it's the allergies um it's okay we're with you good. we'll awesome. accept the emotion <laughs> yeah so thank you both for having me once again um i'm eli uh i'm currently a video producer at the breakfast club aka the world's most dangerous morning show we're now on bet tv so you know big congrats Shout out to BC, yes, indeed. That's a big deal. Uh, yeah, and shout out Drizzy Drake, of course, repping OVO. <laughs> Got to start that early. Uh, yeah, so uh, do I dive into the backstory now, or are we gonna? You can dive into the backstory. Just like how you got, how you guys started. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I and you can curse. Like this is a very free oh, show, free range. Yeah, awesome, yeah, cool. So um, high school, late high school, there was a teacher who told me I was like a creative. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an architect at first and then um once she was like yeah you should apply to um art school and i was like like what the fuck's art school um i applied to like sunnies but obviously my financial well, not obviously but unfortunately my financial circumstances weren't set up in favor of going uh, of attending to a suny so i ended up going to a cuny um spent four years got my bachelor's degree in advertising graphic design or communication design which was the initial title at uh new york city college of, college of technology in brooklyn um Not brooklyn again <laughs> yeah you know um is fun that fact, where you're from sorry to cut you off are you from brooklyn yeah so that okay. was actually what i was just about to say so fun fact i actually lived in all five boroughs i'm originally from the lower east side of manhattan um but grew up for the most part in brooklyn okay Feels which like brought you like the most Brooklyn. Uh, I mean, it depends. I feel like I'm a, city, I'm definitely a city boy at heart, but like Brooklyn feels more like content for me mm -hmm. to live in at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not an initially a New York native, but Brooklyn is my favorite place. And I don't understand that, Chelsea, because you're not even from here. So I, I just don't understand. Queen. So, I was like low key going for the five just now. I was like raising my hand low key. Oh, so yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just like a low, low, five. low, low, low five. Sorry, the work. It's whatever. I mean, I feel like Queens just gets a bad rap, but it's whatever. It does, you know what? Isn't South Shad Jamaica, Queens, and it's crazy. Okay. Come Shout on. out, Mickey. Come yeah, on. but she's been really. We'll get into it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right. another, another, Back another day. to another. our friend Eli here. So, Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Take us into the next step. So, you was like, what is art school? You ended up going there. What made you decide, like, okay, this is really for me? Because we all kind of reached that point where it's like, okay, we go to school, we study this thing. And then when you get into the real world, sometimes we end up where we don't necessarily see ourselves going. So yeah. what made you say, no, I'm going to stick with this. This is for me. Um, Great question. I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I did believe that I had some creative skills. Um. I just wanted to figure out what they were. Um, so once I was in college, I didn't have any graphic design experience, no video producing or editing experience, no creative experience. I mean, I everybody drew in like kindergarten and stuff like that at some point, you know. Um, but I just really gave it my all. And um, I met like a whole bunch of connections. I would always network while I was in that, um, what do they call module? For the first two years when I got my associates in communication design and yeah I was I was outside 
I was outside for real, just networking. I was a part of this club called the Art and Design Club. Shout out Art and Design Club comedy. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then the funny thing was, I remember probably my sophomore, junior year of college, I was like mentoring these uh, video producing like high school students uh, or high school students were who were like video producers at the time. And we had like, uh, how do you say it? Like a, a boot camp, like a one day boot camp. And I, I just went with these guys um, and they did like this project and I saw them editing and I was like, oh, I would never do this. I, I was like, you guys, I really tip my hat off to you guys because video editing is not my thing. I'm going I'm to stick with graphic design and, you know, all that other stuff. Um, and then a year later I was in, or that like next semester I was in, I had to take a video editing class, took that and I fell in love with video editing and found out that I had a pretty good knack for, you know, producing. So, okay. Yeah. Was it easy get, was it, well, I'm going to say easy. Was it, how was the challenges getting from where you were from college to where you are now? Inside of school or like in, in outside? I guess both. Outside, man. Outside's like an, another story in itself. Like that, that's just a, a different, you know, I feel like, outside was the reason why i really gave it my all um when it came to uh my career or like you know where whatever i end up doing occupation um in the long term and i never had like a goal i never you know said oh when i get my bachelor's i'm gonna do this or i want to be a ceo or anything like that um i just you know kind of went with the flow because you know how life goes ups and downs and you never know yep who you're going to meet and stuff like that. So I just really did, did what felt right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that. Yeah. It's really, it's really powerful. It's taking a really powerful, yeah. you know, really powerful story. And, you know, being in a creative uh, peer, career path, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Um, you know, this show is kind of sponsored, mostly about sponsored. It's mostly talked about nine to five versus entrepreneurship. And um, I guess we can di dive right into like the question of the night, which is, would you rather a nine to five or a job where your hours aren't predictable? <sighs> uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. I've had both. Um, I loved the flexibility of doing different things. So my background is in PR and radio. That's how me and Lamarck met. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll dive into that another episode. Can we say where we met? Like we can say it, right? Yeah, sure. We met at Intercom. Intercom. Hello, working for all the OG. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought you we were gonna... We said we were not gonna talk bad. <laughs> oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, we okay. All right. we'll I thought alone. we were gonna play in applause and then into fight. <laughs> yeah. like, nice. Um, so I've had you know different part times. I was dog walking. I was working at the radio. I was working at a community center. Like I was doing different things, and I had a free flow kind of schedule. But the money was slightly unpredictable because it's like, okay, if I don't see these certain dogs and do this amount of walks, I'm not gonna have this extra money on top of the money that I'm making here here, which just pays my bills, you know, or things like that. Right. Versus me going more into the animal industry, which is what I'm in right now, which is crazy from radio to animal industry. We'll, we'll also talk about that. It's animals everywhere. So right. Far. Everywhere. <laughs> like, and yeah. it's also a passion of mine. So why not? And there's there's money in it. Um so going into working a full time now where it's more structured and I know certain hours I'm not available when I get out of work the sun is about to go down soon just those things but um I feel like it makes me appreciate the flexibility of what you can make out of every day because there's there's times where I had off Tuesdays and Mondays or you know Wednesdays and Thursdays now I'm working a regular Saturday, I'm off Saturday, Sunday schedule. Everybody's mm. out. You know, it's yep. I, I like the obscurity of the more free flow schedule, but the nine to five does provide a structure that I think a lot of us need in order to even be great in entrepreneurship if you do decide right. to go into something where you don't really decide your schedule yep. straight up. So I think you need both. It just really depends on who you are as a person. But if I had to pick one, I'm going with the free flow because I just like doing my own thing. Oh, free flow, like entrepreneurship? Yeah, like I'd rather be a freelance or gotcha. a creative if I was, say I was DJing full time. You know, that's honestly what I'm working towards eventually, like as a mm. side thing, because that's not really what I fully want as my career. But yeah, I'd much rather be doing that, running a creative company or owning like 
a media studio or something. Right. You know, or just having like different streams yeah, of income different in streams general. Of, exactly. Like, dabbling, dabbling, mm-hmm. sure. the, yeah. They say, quote unquote, um, that the average, what would be considered successful American has at least seven streams of income, which is insane. How what the fuck? fuck? Thank you. Yeah. I struggle trying legally? to get... Legally? Yes, okay. legally. I, I feel like people who have seven streams of income definitely mm. don't have a, a structured like steady nine to five exactly because how the f yeah how, there's, there's no way no way so that that's my personal opinion right so thank you guys for listening to my ted talk and, <laughs> you know that's <laughs> how i feel no, about it definitely. i mean personally i i did nine to five when i was living in atlanta um i kind of hated it it was eight to five actually mm-hmm. with no benefits oh shout out to icon swim oh um so yeah it just wasn't the best <laughs> um i don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck but um, I don't know. I always wanted to be a star. Like I always wanted to kind of have my voice out there, have my name known. But I feel like God just didn't want me to do certain things at the wrong time. I think if I blew up when I felt like I should blow up, then I think that my ego would have been through the roof. Mm-hmm. I would have not respected it well. I think that I would have been not a bitch, but just I don't know what <laughs> tells you the look. <laughs> but just you know, I wouldn't have. I would have. I wouldn't have really been in the for the right reasons if that makes okay. sense i think that um you know it's god's timing i think moving to atlanta really helped me come into the manner that i am today and it really helped me um show that you know you have your ups and downs because i was gonna give up radio as a whole media when i came back mm-hmm. from atlanta because fuck this i'm not doing it anymore i've been doing it since like what 2018 um and i just felt like personally like it wasn't for me like i kept getting you're great but you're a little urban you're great but you're a little gay yeah. you're great but you know you're you're you're, you're this you're that you got to move somewhere you got to do this so i was like fuck this whole industry fuck it i'm just gonna go be a therapist and um i got a therapy job when i moved back to new york but then i got another job with iheart and um it just went, went up from there so honestly i think that was god i was that was god's way of telling me not to give up because i was about to say fuck it all honestly yeah. Like, fuck the show, fuck, 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 like, whatever, fuck it all. So, I don't know if I answered the question, but I do, in my hearts of hearts, I think that I'm meant to be in a more creative aspect. I mean, I think a nine to five is cool, but I think that I'm supposed to be where I'm supposed to be, and I think that... um Whatever it, it entails. Right. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to be still be on a billboard, maybe not <clears throat> today, but <laughs> it's coming, and... um Coming on your helicopter with the cake, like you said before. Oh, my 30th? <laughs> you know? But, um, you know, I'll be trying. I really feel like sometimes I don't take pride in, like, what I'm actually doing. And sometimes I just be thinking, like, oh, no, it's just a little show. But, no, nah, it's not just a little show. Like, it's we not. was – people saw, like, five different countries, different yeah. 40 cities. So I was like, that's really cool that people really – is fucking mm-hmm. with it. Because – um, and even, like, Eli. Like, Eli works with professionals, professionals, professionals. I mean, I consider myself a professional, but I'm trying. So yeah. the fact that, you know, getting people different – and really fucking with it. I'm like, that's really cool. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you again, once again, for having me. Like, man, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I mean, we still have a whole, we're going to get to some shit, but uh, yeah. we have a whole. <laughs> I'm excited for yeah. You guys, you know? yeah. I'm excited just to be here. Oh, yeah, we welcome all creatives and all walks of life. Yeah. On the show. And I think that's what makes us really cool is because we represent so many different things and especially our guests as well. Like, there's so many different lanes that you represent, you know, mm-hmm. but you're just your one individual. Yeah. So it's just really cool having all of that in one room and being able to really dive into that and find out more about people. People just want to be heard. People just want to, you know, be able to express whatever it is that they have going on or whatever they're working on or passionate about in life. So that's, I feel like, what really makes us stand out. And I love that. Yeah, you know, Mark I feel has like, always been about that. I've always been about that. Right. So I think I'm always about like yeah. having somebody come on, show their story. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like that whole ego shit. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I do have a little ego, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's never like to the point where like I'm like I feel like I'm better than somebody else. Yeah. I just don't want to accept pickle juice. Like I don't like that to me. I don't like I don't like disrespect. And I don't like bullies. And I don't like being felt like I'm going less than my worth. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. And I like to be respected, like just how I respect everybody else. And I feel like sometimes in this industry, people like to play with you. They like to give you free stuff. They like to make you do things. And, you know, it's just kind of shitty. Yeah. Eli, any experiences you could share with the people that you had where you felt like either somebody with a big ego was coming at you, you felt disrespected, or you just felt like, wow, this is just really like somebody, somebody else powerful that tried to, I guess, diminish your worth. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, um, so coming out, I'm not sure how how I should like 
frame this and phrase mm-hmm. this because I don't want to like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you don't have to name drop if you don't awesome. you know. yeah so um not my current job obviously <laughs> but um, one of the jobs that I've had in the past I um uh, my manager wasn't very fond of me but it was actually her manager who got me the job in the first place and I already knew like from the from the jump that like if it were if it were up to her um my manager she would definitely not have fired me um you know, I always had a good attitude when it came to like workplace um, etiquette and all that stuff. And um, I always also found something to be like passionate about, even if like the work itself kind of sucked. Um, but yeah, the work at that particular job didn't suck. It was great. And I was good at what I did. But I remember um, because this was like a temporary job, my manager had once said, um, she kind of like downplayed me in a way um, where, <clears throat> sorry, I told you my voice was no, you're, going, you're fine, you're fine, you're it's fine. going down. Um, there was an, one of my coworkers, she basically gave that coworker all this praise um, as if they were like better than me. Uh, and I wasn't even coming from a place in the first place um, where I was making myself seem like I was anyone. I was just myself. I was like, you know, like I'm just here doing what I got to do and, uh, trying my best at it. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that right there kind of triggered something in me that was like, like, you don't see anything in me kind of felt, you know, um, what's the word? Um, it's like, I guess it feel like, you know, somebody telling you can't do something. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna show you that I really can. Yeah, it's it. not so right. crushing. It's just yeah. kind of like, you felt be, like she tried like belittling. belittling you. Yeah. Like yeah. she tried to diminish who you were, your, your talent and your character. Yeah, like not yeah. Even. Yes, I see. You usually find that people who who are I wouldn't I don't want to say jealous, but sometimes was she older than you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes people who see younger people on a trajectory, I think that they wanted to be on, or they see a skill or a talent that maybe they don't have. Instead of learning how to embrace that from a younger person, it becomes kind of like this jealousy or belittlement or trying to make that person be like, oh, mm, the little project yeah. you did, that was yeah, yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, you that's know. right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, right. That's exactly what, that, what it felt like. Yeah, was. and I, I feel like that's the energy she was probably giving you because she was, you know, wishing that she had that skill. Like, dang, if I was his age and I had the chance to do that, sometimes we come across that. Yeah. And because we're growing, we grew up in a culture where it's like, oh, respect your elders or respect your man. No, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, fuck bitch. that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you ain't ass bitch, okay? Sometimes you need to cross that line. I don't care the age because respect. <laughs> Thank you. Beyond. You got to give respect to get it in any lane. So, I fucking agree. Absolutely. Where she at? Where, she, where you left her? And, look, you know, look where you're at. So. Thank you. Yeah. So. Period. Uh, so, Eli, um, did we talk about your sign? Oh, oh yeah. I want to dive into that. Oh, it's you know, going down. <laughs> Okay, can we take some guesses first? Well, or... initially, Chelsea's guess was a Scorpio. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, you like Drake. Yeah. Okay, so, so you are a Scorpio. Yeah. No. No. Oh. Okay. Wait, all right. Or uh, your water sign. Is that giving too much away? No, because then there's three to choose from. I uh, I personally, I just give you a top three and I'll give my top three. Okay. I think it's either a Sagittarius. Oh, maybe an Aquarius. I was getting Aquarius vibes too. Aquarius, Scorpio... Or Something like, spicy. Maybe, maybe a Taurus. Maybe, maybe Virgo, a little bit of Virgo. Oh. I was going to say Virgo. Oh, no. oh. What? Yeah, it, might, it might be a no, Taurus. Okay. Nothing against Virgos okay. entirely. Oh. Okay. We're no, I, know, I know like there's like <laughs> legends who are Virgos and, you know. Shout out to Beyonce. Yes. But Virgos are a lot. I mean, they that. that are, um, so I feel like there's different types of Virgos. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fun fact: I I don't know. Uh, all of my exes are Virgos. So oh wow. I just wanted... Really? I oh, and one wow, Libra. Like, I know how many exes you have? I just... <laughs> oh, there's only like three or four of them. But yeah, I'm I have this weird thing with Virgo men, even though they're absolutely <clears throat> bad shit. But... They're not as bad as Sagittarius. I okay. Wait, wait. That's a different yeah, story yeah, with Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah. mm, that's a different. Okay, so were we right in any of our guesses? No, no. But are I'm you a not... fire sign? No. Oh. Yeah. No. I'm a. How do I'm a cancer. What? Really? <laughs> I'm a cancer too. How the fuck did oh, no I way. get that? <laughs> Wait, June or July? July. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, fun fact: the emoji calendar icon. There's like three of them, but like two out of those three are July 17th. So that's a good way to remember. Okay. Wow. Oh, you're a core cancer. Like he's really deep in yeah. there. He's not on the cusp like you are, kind of. So you see how you just came. Well, you, are just, you in June? I'm in June. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah so I like, know a lot of June cancers too. So me and Gemini are like. 
yeah, you know. But he's a very proud cancer. Yeah, that's for sure. This is this is gonna go great. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and then the Leo sandwich in the middle. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know what, Chelsea? He'd be big mad, but he loves me. You guys. I, I love know. I love Leo's as friends, is. but relationships. So me personally, right. I'm sensitive. I don't know if you're sensitive, but no, I feel like so. I mean to a certain extent. Okay. I feel like in relationships, these bigger signs with those mouths like Leo, Sagittarius, <laughs> Capricorn, they get really mouthy. And am I bugging or like they get a little mouthy? And Those um are really sweet. I'm not saying you guys aren't sweet. I'm just saying that mouth is crazy and I just don't have the time. So I that's mean have you, that, I mean, have you had life. similar experiences with that or oh me? Yeah. Uh I mean I'm not too deep into the you know post zodiac spectrum. Mm-hmm. I you know, I obviously so you said all your exes were majority of them, yeah. Virgos. Virgos. And I didn't have that many exes, you guys. I'm not really. Yeah, so um, I've only had two exes who were Virgos, and my first ex, I'm not sure what her son was. Like I said, I'm not too much into that Zodiac. It wasn't like a long-term thing. Um, How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, yeah. uh, Well, are you single right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you looking? Uh, casually, I feel like okay. I am. It's it's tough. I feel you know like this is we can get real deep we into about, it, but we, we we will we should we <laughs> yeah, should get, because hey, I mean the floor is yours. Let oh me tell you, God. this generation does not know love. No, and they it's, don't. I'm an old soul. I'm I'm very much an old soul, hopeless romantic. I um. I just hate social media. <laughs> like it's I hate just, TikTok. Yeah, let me tell you. Since there's TikTok. so much that's ruining like the most genuine thing in life, which is like love and like real real connection. Organic connection. That's that's why it's so hard to like find someone in today's, you know. Too many freaking options. This is not DoorDash, okay? Yeah, right? You cannot just get something and say your order is wrong. Yeah. Or buy something and put it on the shelf. These like, are people's feelings and lives there's, on the line. It's, there's literally like uh, food like ordering apps like um, DoorDash, Grubhub, whatever, and then there's dating apps. Like I'm like, what yeah. has the world yeah. come to that we can't like? Uh, but everybody's supposed to have sex in those dating apps, so yeah. there's that. Sure. Yeah, majority. Mm. I mean, we're at the age though where I mean that is what we should be doing. That's also a different topic. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so would you rather though date somebody with a nine to five or somebody who kind of has a more mm-hmm. entrepreneurship lifestyle? <clears throat> Um, I feel like it wouldn't really matter. I, yeah, matter. I, it would be either or. I feel like as long as that significant other of mine is has goals, or not even just goals, just has their a good head on their shoulders, right. that independent, that like, and ambition has that um the drive that drive yeah they just you know um but whatever it is that they do as long as they're passionate about it they love doing it um whether they're in a relationship or not it wouldn't stop them from reaching that like um goal or dream of theirs that's what like really um uh, that what really kind of i get what you're saying i get what you're saying i definitely get what you're saying um i feel like or to you know, see it's the same answer. I feel like it's probably the same. Personally, though, I don't. I feel like I would date a rapper though, just to get an NDA and just get that out of my system. But that's just me for like a one little night night thing. But after my rapper situation, then I'm gonna just go with the um the love thing. But you know, I'm still gonna do the rapper because, honey, it's 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 coming. Okay, no, Speak- I feel that. Um, but before we get to you, Chelsea, have you had like people because of your job, like people just want to be cool with you because of what you do? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. For sure. I'm sure. People used to do that to us, and we weren't even on. Yeah, honey, I was the like, same please. I, was so like, I can imagine people doing all kind of crap. But would you date a Chelsea at nine to five? Um, or? So it, I agree with Eli. Like, it really depends on that person. As long as like you're happy, you're passionate about what you do. You're, you know, it's something that you will wake up and want. Not well, everybody's not waking up and doing what they want to do for free. So yeah, but I just. Uh, I don't know. How do I feel about that for real, for real? Because I do want you to be bringing in some income. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
But if you're passionate about what you do and it makes you happy, right? What's better than that? Because the you know what you're gonna exuberate, like the energy you're gonna bring. Like they may be broke right now, yeah, but they're doing their passion. Exactly. Even though I'm a little tired of you know doing the what do you call it the flipper rapper houses, <laughs> I feel like sometimes we do that with people like we think they have potential, but I'm not Summer Walker. I can't see everybody's potential, so I just. <sighs> Bring in some income, but just be doing what you love. I support it. As long as our lifestyles mesh together, you're growing into what you want to do. I'm able to still be my own person. You're still able to be your own person. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. Do you, baby. Do you. That's how I feel. Okay. So are you looking? Are you like just living? I'm also just like casually out here at Free Flow. And I feel like I've had a lot of shit happen in the past few months. So mm. I'm not taking anybody seriously at all. Well, next episode's about heartbreak. So we'll really get to that. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll dive into that. Into that. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Can't wait to watch that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shit. All right. So I guess any last questions for Eli before we get into Lamar's Corner you have? No, I feel like you definitely were able to answer everything. And then my main question, of course, was your sign. Because I was like, you're giving mystery, <laughs> but at the same time, you're very direct. I feel like I really did not get cancer though. I didn't get that either. So you definitely walked in here on some heartbreak poppy vibes. <laughs> and it's not just because the the OVO. It's it's not. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. Are you happy though? Like, are you do you feel like you're happy with the choices you made where you are right now in your career? And then also, you know what? Yes, I do have another question. Where do you see yourself going? You don't have to give a timeline because I feel like I hate timelines. That's some bullshit. But where do you see yourself going with the path that you're on now? That's a great question. I feel like I've been asked that um, a lot as of lately, um, and I really don't. I really don't have any goals right now. I really don't see. There's no like vision. It's usually for me. It's like step by step. Uh, whatever life has in store for me, just because of how things go, like how life is, and um, not to sound like you know sad or like pessimistic. I'm very optimistic. I have very good positive energy towards um life in itself i'm like very grateful just to wake up every day um alive happy healthy um but yeah i i feel like i just want to be able to continue doing what i'm doing and i feel like i don't even know what i'm doing mm. like to be very honest but no but that's real that's that. real yeah. yeah i get it <laughs> Like they may not, but I, <laughs> but I get it. We're like I really get what you're fucking saying. Yeah, taking it one day at a time. Right. Nobody knows what you're they're doing. No one knows the what the fuck they're you doing. Get, the more you learn, the more, and then you step back and you look at your elders too. Like, oh shit, them niggas they know what the fuck they was doing. Exactly. However, what? though, elders don't understand when you do a creative um field uh, when you don't get the money. Especially like when you're Caribbean. Oh, oh my god, oh. we're not gonna get into that. It is. Yeah, the creative field is like mm. another life parent field. hell. Like they do not get it unless. I mean, you now, now it's becoming more prominent just because of like everyone is yeah yeah getting it you know. But we spoke before we get into Mars Corner. We spoke about this on the last episode about like how now celebrities have radio shows and um podcasts. How do you feel about that? Because we were saying that I feel like it should be both ways. I feel like the you know the young stars that actually go to school and do this don't get the same opportunities that maybe like a lot of will get or like somebody like a Nicki Minaj or somebody like a, a Joe Budden will get for a show because of their you know popularity. Yeah, why does course. Jennifer Hudson have a talk show? Kelly Clarkson. Tell me why. Well, people like Kelly Clarkson's show when she gets on her knees and like does the thing with the people. No, 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 that sounds bad. No, when she like, you know, grabs her hand and like, like it's an intimate thing. Y'all know if y'all watch the show. But um, Eli, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, um, I feel like nowadays, obviously to each his own in terms of like doing whatever it is that you you want to do or think you want to do. Mm -hmm. and I say think you want to do because um, as Mark mentioned, a lot of celebrities are starting podcasts, but they're already celebrities. They already have platform. They already have um those people backing them to right. start you know a podcast like um and have that quick startup turnaround whatever it is um i don't know what your I just media said. training is great it's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> let me tell you so that, i'm trying to like get you a little but you're just he's really no. on it um, no, he wouldn't even mention this. names and, you see, and I just want to point out that's the difference between somebody who's a professional in this field and someone who just does it for kicks or because they have a following because you know how to word what you're saying yeah. you know how to ask particular questions you know how to really dive in and get the, the answer in the story or the angle there's a difference not everyone should have a mic no but please continue uh, yeah please <laughs> yeah, for sure um, and yeah as for those kids teenagers and 
people who are looking to get into um, starting a podcast, I feel like they definitely deserve um, more more light, especially if they're good at it. Like if they're really passionate about it, if they're giving it their all, if they're using the majority of their time to do what it is that they love in this instance, or in this case, po- doing a podcast, um, they deserve like more of that recognition. And I feel like a lot of that's getting lost, lost in today's um, like media. Um, you know, I mean, Instagram just had blue checks like that were given out, you know, yeah. like subscriptions. And I'm just like, I, I don't know how everyone else feels about that. Personally, I just didn't really see it as like, it's, it's just, it's making everything even less organic right. than it already was. It was already generic and now we're making it even more generic. And I'm like, how, you know, generic is it going to get? Now we got AI songs, so. I'm not gonna lie. Some of Ariana's <laughs> AI songs eat. But. Yo, yeah, yo, they but came out with a Drake and Weekend collab yes. AI song, and you know I'm a Drake fan. I should was slapping. They did a Kendrick one. It's just really scary. It's this. That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, it's it's too much. It's a whole nother monster. Too much. Yeah. Everybody's just, doing the same thing. We just gotta like find our only. That's why I said earlier. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it because you can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna do what that person's doing, or you gotta just really just focus, hone mm-hmm. in, and if you're good at it. Awesome. Great. Right. Let it be authentic. Like, make it your own. And I think that's the issue that we're having with everyone having a podcast, everyone having a talk show or feeling like there's some kind of, you know, five second sensation. Like, it's not that. People feel when you have a real authentic connection and, you know, passion for what it is that you do. People feel what you actually put on the table. You know, there's a difference between somebody hearing you and feeling you. And I, I that's the difference I want to be able to make with what I do. Yeah, no, facts. I, I'm just really tired of the lane being clogged up. It's like all this, this, it's not even diarrhea. It's constipation at this but point. But I don't even blame them. I blame the big corporations. Oh, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, money, really. it should just be, if you're going to have like five celebrities and have the same as, you know, people. But people don't want to groom nobody new. They don't want to groom new talent. Yeah, nowadays, so. nobody's, nobody's trained anymore. That takes us into like the whole Chloe thing when people talk about like, you know, oh, why didn't her rollout go do this or yeah. whatever? Or why does Lotto have a show? She's not even media trained. And yeah, they're skipping step to do certain things and it shows. Yeah. Well, on that note, I'm going to go to Lamarck's Corner. Yay. Uh-oh. Oh, the story gets <laughs> crazy. So <laughs> Lamarck's Corner, where I answer all the questions you guys send me advice, shade, all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right, question number one. What are your feelings on open relationships? I feel like if I'm single, it's fine. You know? Can, can you define open relationships? Somewhat, if, like if you're with somebody and they're living their life with other people, but they're still with you, but they're also with other people. Yeah, that was what they said about like Aisha Curry and Steph Curry before, right? There was like a rumor going around. Ooh, I didn't hear that. Wasn't that like a Will and Jada kind of thing? Yeah, I think, yeah, it was like just a... Yeah. Was that a rumor? No, that's real. Oh. The August all saying the thing was uh, that whole thing was that real. was part of their open relationship. Yeah. Oh wow. Um. We'll have some tea on that, but I don't. I, I mean, we, I'm we gonna kinda, leave it we see. We kind of seen what it led up to. Yeah. I personally, I don't think I could do it. I'm very selfish when it comes to that kind of thing. I'm still working on being. I feel like. Well, actually, no. I've come a long way with that, but at the same time, I like that. If that's my partner, like that's yeah, I could do it if I'm single. But if I'm, t- <laughs> if yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. Like- I was single and I dealt with someone who was polyamorous, but I really feel like I couldn't get a grip of who they were because I just felt like you were placing your energy in so many different places. Yeah, how could what me and you have be as strong, or be anything more than a friendship, or more than just like <clears throat> friends with benefits? Right. So it made no sense to me. So I'm gonna say no. Yeah. Yeah. Being in your late 20s, what's something you wished you knew back when you were 21? Mm. I wished I knew to be, well, not, I don't want to say consistent because the kid is consistent. I feel like I wish I knew the power of the, my voice and the power that I had when I walked in a room and the power that I can have when just knowing, like knowing what I could do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I was so shy and insecure and dealing with so much shit that I didn't really realize, damn, like you could really be doing some shit. Like, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of opportunities I didn't get because I kind of just like took the, you know, safe route, I, safe route okay. or I moved to the back or just like, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm the person like, you know, Chelsea, I think you don't like, I'm gonna give you that shine. Or, Eli, you fire. Like, I'm gonna give you that. Like, I'm the person that, you, you, you think I'm like dope too? Like, I'm not gonna push myself out there. Mm-hmm. I'll push somebody else out there, but not myself. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, let somebody else tell it, then they're gonna think the opposite, but whatever. <laughs> um, so I guess that's what I would say in a nutshell. What about you, Eli? So the question was something that I wish I knew when I was 21 that I know now. Mm -hmm. Um This is it was a tough this is a tough question. Um I mean I feel like when I was 21 not that I had it all figured out but I kind of already had that mindset that same mindset that I do now. Um I just handled things differently and when I say things I mean things like stress, things like um being by myself doing things alone. Um and obviously growing as an individual, um, now living on my own. There's just so, so many things that I learned now that like in order for me to wish that I knew it when I was 21, I would have to have it when I was 21. Mm. You know, like, so now that I have these things, I'm like, you know, it was a learning process. I didn't just get it. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's that's how I feel. Mm. This episode is right deep. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was that was good. Okay. Very profound. Oh, a little snap. Thank right. you. I, thought, I, I thought I was I thought it was over for me. I was like, oh, this no, is that's right. Like, right. I do know, know that's right. Um, I wish I knew more about my power. Like what Mark said, listen, pussy is power. Okay, I'm not just I mean, saying pussy, that but, to but, just yeah, you know be all Trina about it. But shout out to the Queen of Miami though. <laughs> Um, but I will say, like, I just wish that I knew, like Lamarck said, like to be, I feel like I already put myself out there so much. I was less afraid actually when I was younger to do things, but I just wish to I knew how to put more power behind the things I was doing. Right. How to be like, no, I don't want to do that, or yeah, I do like that and I should do this. How to really be more definitive about some of my choices. Um mm. I don't I don't feel like I made any choices that were detrimental or that weren't good. I definitely was good about not following the crowd, but yeah. just knowing the power behind who I was and that who what I was doing was, you know, something that was really great. And yeah. I should have I feel like been a little bit more forceful and stuck to that instead of allowing it to go to the wayside. Uh, that makes bit. sense. Yeah. But also I feel like life came in and kind of changed up my circumstances. So it's yeah. not all necessarily my fault. Yeah, life is a yeah. Bitch. yeah, yeah. But I feel like I still through what I was going through, I could have pushed a little harder for right. my ambitions at the time. Yeah. But I'm still happy with, you know, the fact that I got myself back onto the path that where I want to be. Right. That makes sense. You like you mind moving a little bit to the left. I mean, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was I off cam? Nah, you just like it was blocking your face a little bit, but I wanted everybody to see, you know, everything. I add that part out. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. How does someone attract you? Meaning what stands out for you when someone is trying to pursue you or if you're trying to pursue them? Consistency. Oof. Consistency. Genuine authenticity. Like. I don't like consistency if you're nuts. Oh, yeah, then, like, no. That's just being crazy. Yeah. I had to I changed my number because I had a stalker. Oh. Yeah, it was a lot. Mm, it was a lot. Didn't that. Yeah. You so. About it? No, not really. Fuck okay. him. But I just, but I just feel like. <laughs> Cause like Lotto said, pussy. If you gonna put it on the floor, put it on the floor. But if you're not gonna, you know what? Next, just get, go, go with your go with your thing. Before I get hey. real crazy on this show. Um, no, you. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I, I want to say consistency, but after the situation I just had, I want to say just genuine love. Mm -hmm. Like just be fucking genuine. Like yeah. if, if whenever you if you want to just have sex, be like you just want to have sex. Mm -hmm. If you want to do something dope, yeah. just, like just just be fucking genuine and keep it a buck for yeah. me. Yeah. Facts. I'm glad you went first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, second in this case. Yeah, I'm right. saying before me. Okay. Yeah. But I'm going to just have to go back to saying consistency. Like that kind of shows the core of everything. It shows that you're going to be willing to try. And we spoke earlier about people just being so quick to just not even try. Like yep. just give up. Like some, something happens one time and it's a wrap. They're ready to move on or like they're ready to cheat. Like I was talking to this guy. And he literally told me, I forgot what happened. They got into, he got into an argument or something because his girl, they're together like a month. And his girl thought something was going on. He lied about it. And because she got upset about it, he really did decide to go cheat. And I'm like, how does that make sense? How does that, how did, oh, <laughs> ah, the ghetto. Yeah. So recognizing those red flags. Oh, that's another thing too. Oh, red flags. The red flags. Oh my God. No. How do we all have red flags though? Yes, but I'm not pretending that your flags are anything but red if they're red. Yeah. Okay. We got to be honest and save ourselves everything that is to come if we aren't honest from the start. I think that's important. 
Next question. My boyfriend's body count is pretty high, and I'm a virgin. It makes me feel insecure at times. Any advice? Girl, if you don't hop on the dick. <laughs> <laughs> what that got to do with you? He with you right now, right? I mean, unless he's still a gallus out there, I mean, do your thing. At least he has the experience he can teach you. You know what I'm saying? He can turn you into the, the sex goddess you want to be. So you Yeah, as long as not being a dick about it. Yeah, like it's fine. You can either be positive about that or, oh my God, yeah, like, are we in high school? Like, who cares? You're here. We are, we're human beings. We're meant to have sex. That is, we're here to hey. procreate. Whether you're procreating or not, we have the option now to do that. If you're, you're young, you want to live your life, do it. And that, that comes with, like, whether you have insecurities or not. Yeah. Yeah. I feel and like, especially when it comes to insecurities, it's just good to um, confront them, like tackle them head on and, you know. Absolutely. And if you, oh, you're with some, you should be with somebody who's helping you feel secure. Right. So if you're with someone who makes you feel insecure and the, the sexual part makes it even worse, then maybe you need to rethink who you're with. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well said. But I also don't want to like, because technically it's not really his, like, you know what I'm saying? Like he... If he has just very experienced and you're not, you feel a way about that, then that's right. something that you can really do. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, that's definitely yeah. an insecurity. I yeah. think that's something you have to check within yourself. Thanks for the question. Yeah. <laughs> like you read her a little. But okay, and that last question. Can you be with someone who doesn't make as much time for you due to work obligations? Been there. Um, obviously not. <laughs> it didn't work out. So I don't think so. It depends. Cause I mean, I work a lot too. So like it really depends on us having time making time for each other but if it's always a something like i would be that person like i'm not canceling but if you cancel a lot then we may have to have a conversation that's what i'm saying like, like the yeah. first kind of cancel i can understand but like if it's like a continuous cancellation because of work shit then we may have to figure something out yeah i really i really don't like that shit i feel like um i agree with you lamar um, in terms of like having their priorities straight, but if they make it like a consistent thing where they're kind of putting you second, it kind of defeats the purpose of you trying to put them first in the right. first place. <laughs> like I'm like, all right, then we just have you ever have you guys ever been with somebody who like tries to match your energy all the time? Yes, I was literally about to say it's this. just like I don't know how you guys feel about that, <laughs> but for me, I'm not one of those people. Like I don't want to be matched because you never know. Like there's obviously like the sixty. 40 when it comes to like relationship giving whatever it is um sacrificing more than the other person at times due to certain circumstances but like at the end of the day it's like not everything's going to be equal all the time because life is different for everyone individually period come on i was literally going to say it and it came out of his mouth that's amazing that's how i feel too and i hate a motherfucker that's always like oh you know i'm busy like i'm like we're all busy we yeah. all have yep. different things going on we all have different things we're working on and i'm a big believer that we make time for the things that are important to us so yeah i want my man to be out here doing his thing be right. busy i want to nothing feels better than you know being with somebody who can match your ambition that is something i want you to nothing match. sucks more than being busier than somebody and them telling them telling you that they're busy yeah oh, Oh like, my god! Excuse I don't me? do that. I feel like don't they do sometimes say that because of all the times you said you're busy. They're like, "Oh, I'm just gonna say I'm busy yeah. because all those times you." I'm like, "No, I was actually genuinely busy, and I still tried to make time for you. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work out, but you failed to understand." Like, that. Understand that, like people's time is important. Right. Like, if somebody tries to make time for you, like that says a lot. So the person who always hits me with the "I'm busy," that doesn't work for me because I'm just that's busy. Right. I'm out here doing different things, so don't let that. I'll just stop it right there. We don't even gotta worry about it. So, Eli, we asked every guest um, mm. these two questions. Oh, now, uh, <laughs> the one is the freakiest thing you've ever done. And you can, I mean, you can, again, it's your comfortability. Yeah. Some people don't want to say too many different things, but whatever you want to say. Yeah, I mean, um, I really don't know. Um, I feel like, like, what's, so what's the... We? I don't believe what's, <laughs> see, You're a cancer, so I know. I mean, listen, listen, I'll, I'll be honest. All right, I, um, of course, I'm in my 20s. My hormones are on tilt. They're, like, on, you know, on a mission, <laughs> like, you know. I, um, but I just feel like... Threesomes? No, public. not yet. I, you know Ooh. what's weird? You know what's weird? Yet. I, um, I prefer... I, I don't, I don't know how to say this. Like, I haven't had a threesome, so I don't, I'm not sure if saying this is going to be true in the long run. But um, I feel like I'm more of a passionate, like, love maker mm. versus, you know, like a, a 
quick one hit a quitter yeah or doing it you know having like a, a threesome thrill, yeah, yeah I, I would definitely say though if i do have a threesome it's gonna be with women um only <laughs> yeah sorry gay like guys out there like yeah no for, no listen yeah. to each his own um yeah. But I feel like it's easier just to focus on that one, you know, and really, yeah, because it's kind of like if you're doing it with two, I'm I'm the type of person that I want to, I'm in favor of my not my not my significant other, but the other party right. involved. Like that's I'm trying to get them to where they need to get. Come on, get to, and then um, so it's Watch like it. two times as hard. No pun intended. Bing <laughs> if, bong. There's, if there's two women involved or more. So I'm kind of just, you know, it could have happened, I think, like one time. Um, but I think you I was that time I think I was a virgin at, at that at that uh, time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I lost my virginity late in the game. But same. Okay. It's okay. It's it's same. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not no, I'm not ashamed. I could have yeah. lost it. I could have lost it. I could have lost it at like fucking 13. But right. <laughs> yeah, but that that choice is, you know, yeah. That's a different a divine choice, you know, like yeah, I was on a mission trying to shift the culture. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you do you wanna answer that question though? What the freakiest thing? Yeah. Uh I mean, I, I don't really I've never done anything like public. That. Nothing public? No oh in a car? Uh, yeah, 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 in my car for sure. Um yeah. Well there you go. Okay, but yeah. We'll we'll, that. We'll so take like that. one to ten, what would you give yourself as a freak number? Currently, like my my hormones are on like eleven out of I'm kidding out there. <laughs> they're they're like it depends on the day. It depends on the day. Um but overall yeah. though. Yeah, no, I like people have this thing where they're like freaked out with fee and like all these things like I'm just open to anything and everything for the most part. Same, like, all the basic, ex except like, like bodily stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's the, there's like a basic package. There's like <laughs> yeah. the, you know, okay. there's like yeah. tears. Yeah. I feel like yeah. you know, like I'm I'm not like the extreme, but I'm like in that median range where it's kind of like it's not like like oh my god, are you crazy? Like right. I would have never expected. It's just like you know. Okay, so right. it's giving five six energy. Yeah, five six. Okay, okay, yeah. Six. okay. Yeah. that's fair. Okay. Okay. Lamarck, what would you what would you say? Because Lamarck loves to give the official number. Oof. So from what you've learned. Okay, well, well, he's straight. So that's like a I would say maybe like you've done everything with a woman. Yeah. Um, but well, a butt play. Like you don't do that, like you're not really into that. Uh to a certain extent. I mean, like, what do you mean? Like just doing anal in general, like yeah, and just in general, like groceries. Yeah. Yeah, I mean both, like just Ooh. in general, like eating. Okay. But would you let her? Oh no. Um not a, no, not. So you, gotta, you have to really be comfortable to even think about somebody. Yeah, like, I, feel, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like it's like That's what may, it's maybe in the future, like yeah. my wife, if we have kids and we're yeah. like we've done everything yeah. Yeah. when it yeah. comes to sex, and we just want to experiment, we'll try out other things. Um, but you know, it makes I, I'll say like around six, to like you know, six it's is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's given six. Give, it's given six. Yeah, it's given six. Give it six, especially but. You know the cancer in him. It's got to be. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if it's somebody he really fucks with, then it's gonna be. Yeah, his, it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, fire. like off the chart. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna get fireworks. Okay. All right, all right, Chelsea. Okay. This is your, this is your time. All right. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna. Come yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta get a drop. <laughs> it's drop for it's, this it's the way. It's the way he's about to do. I don't know what the I'm fuck like, he's about to say. I'm excited. Okay, do you watch Love Is Blind? No. Uh, I, I've heard of it. Heard I, I, should, I should be watching. Okay. But. All right, Lamar, are you up to date with everything I'm up to date. happened? Okay, great. All right, so it's time for What the Fuck Happened This Week with Chelsea Nate. This is where we just go over, like, you know, some topics about what's happening, obviously, whether that's music, politics, you know. Just life. Just life in general. Mm. So let's start with, we had weekend one of Coachella pass by, one of the most popular Oof. music festivals in America, in the world, actually, because people from all around the world go to right. Coachella. And um, Frank Ocean was the headliner. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I heard he was awful. We, yep. We're going to get into that. Yeah. We hadn't seen Frank on a stage in about six years. Um, All of the fans had long awaited to see him perform. They're like, you know, he's going to come. He's going to kill it. He's going to be worth us, you know, running and waiting hours at the front of this stage set. Well, Frank decided he's going to come on late. Frank also decided he was going to change his stage set so that you couldn't see him while he was performing. So those people that waited hours in the front didn't even see him perform. He also told them they can't live stream him because he ain't doing that. So the people at home that wanted to see him wouldn't be able to see that either. And then on top of that, 
he cut the stage set short because they were letting him know the curfew was coming. And instead of just, you know, wrapping it up for the folks, he just said, sorry, guys, they told me um, it's curfew. Um, I got to go. Bye. Now, Frank is gay, right? Well, he's bi. It's giving, seeing both sides like Chanel. Because I don't want to go too, I don't, I don't like to go too hard on my black gay brothers. Okay. Um, But damn. Yeah. And then he canceled Weekend 2 performance, which I think we all can agree was the right thing to do because he. Well, maybe he wasn't think, mentally I, stable. I, I, guess, I think I he know. said that he was like injured, like, or somewhat. Uh -oh. They claim he is. I'm <laughs> oh. sorry, Frank. I don't believe it. SZA, I think, was also in attendance to see Frank. Yep. Um, a lot of them were. And. Um, you know, Justin Bieber wrote him a love letter instead of being worried about his wife's mental health. There was so much going on. Justin Bieber Everybody, this one out. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a bit toxic yeah, right now. Right? Should, it, question, if Frank drops like a project soon, would you guys forgive him? I mean, I'm a Frank Ocean fan as well. I'm a hardcore fan. Yeah, no. So <laughs> Channel Orange, deep backdrop. Channel Orange is one of the albums of my lifetime. Like, we all have albums that mean a lot to us that yeah. have helped us get through something. Mm -hmm. And Channel Orange is definitely one of those albums for me. So Frank is a legendary artist in my book. Yep. But I'm not paying to see him. You know why? why? He's a sh shitty life performer. He's proven that time and time again. And he's also inconsistent. And I think Frank is just, it's giving the Andre 3000 effect where they have so much social anxiety and so many things they're working through. They just want to create the art and put it out yeah. and not really be bothered by it, you know? Yeah. He has a very cult following. So he knows no matter what he does, he's going to have fans because, what you know, the things he creates are timeless. I can admit that. But I'm not paying to see Frank. I'm not standing up for hours to see Frank. None of that. Oh, yeah, not, and if, yeah. as a person who was the people who were in charge of Coachella, I'm sorry, the booking team should have known better based off of his history that he was not going to be a good decision. But I understand why they did it. That's like giving Lauren Hill. No, you don't. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's <honestly, laughs> no, honestly, it's giving Lauren Hill. <sighs> I'm just saying. Yikes. Yeah. yeah All right. So moving on to the next topic, love is blind. Okay. So Eli doesn't watch it, but you're familiar with everything going on. Did you, did you hear about how the finale was live streamed, but it didn't start until like an hour or two later. And then oh, like it said, didn't oh. fucking go on. So it was only, I think they cut people off so that other people could join. That's how they got it to work. I don't know what they did, but I just know it was a mess. Okay. By the time they came on, Vanessa and Nick were lit. Everybody was tired. Irina was, you know, her makeup was melting by then. I just, yeah, but Jackie I just, and that got to even go. So the, they didn't because the they're messy yeah. and they're cowards. That's why. Yeah. So can we talk about how Zach gathered Irina, which they call her Fiona? I would have rather Irina came there and just been like the bitch that she's known to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I like my mean people mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you're going to be me a villain, I would have went in there and be like, fuck all y'all. I don't give a fuck. I said what I said and what's what. Like, like I'm like, that was, yeah, I was, well, she didn't go. So I don't. Yeah, that, that's, exactly. She was so mean. She didn't want to show up. Yeah, but I, I give Irina more respect because she showed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would just just rather her more, just be more of the person she was on the camera. Like, I mean, yeah. mental health is a serious thing. And I do, I do understand her saying that, you know, she was trying to figure out some shit and whatever, whatever. But she was, she's mean. So just go in there. Be like, if you mean, be mean. Yeah, I don't have space for mean girls in my life. And Irina, baby, <clears throat> we're not doing it. I don't believe in what you're trying to sell us. It's not working. And there were a lot of little other moments going on. But for overall, Netflix, it was a mess. Yeah, Netflix was a mess. So we, we need a refund this Yeah, month. we do. <laughs> Give everybody back their payment for the month. Thank you. <laughs> you tried it. Okay. Um. So also some new music that we saw. So between the time that we last spoke because right. you guys we do these every other week so we right. don't see you every week right so since then drake has dropped new music i know lotto has dropped some new singles she's another controversial figure right i now. don't know why people always on lotto's ass well that was going to get me into the next topic of princess diana remakes coming out and mm -hmm. her versus nikki and them saying how ice spice is the new princess of rap I'm sure that bothers Lotto, who probably thinks that she's a princess of rap. I think I don't none think, of them are. I don't think Ice Spice and Lotto, like, they're two different, like, you know. Two different vibes. Right. Facts. Yeah, also, Coyle Ray um, thinks that Lotto had taken shots at her over these lyrics in her new song. Yeah, because she's oh. small. Yeah, she said, like, something about a blunt being the size of Coyle Ray. But I don't, we, I didn't that really see it as a diss. I yeah. think it was just more like a... I thought she was coming more. Yeah, I like mentioned, but I could understand how Koi would take it that yeah, way because yeah. Koi is also a smoker, so she'd probably be like, Bitch, Yeah, but what? shout out Koi. Yeah, no, She's we, a baddie. She, it, see, yeah. I love that. I think Koi is beautiful as well. And I love that like, examples like her and Glorilla, 
they come out, they're popping, they're doing their thing, and they're not allowing, even though it's probably hard, they're not allowing what people think and say to change who they are. Yeah, absolutely. They're gorgeous. They don't need to do anything. Koi is beautiful. And for her to be like a slim figure, I feel like she's still just, she radiates. Yeah. Like, it's giving the same energy of what if a stereotypical Instagram girl walked in, you know, like yeah. she still radiates beauty, in my opinion. I like Lotto. I do. I like Lotto too, but she's been messy lately. I don't not like Ice Spice. I just, some of her music, I just, I can't really vibe with. Really? Okay, can you give me an example? Because I, I think Icy Spicy is doing it. The EP was. I crazy. like in, in her mood. Like, is it in her mood? But mm-hmm. the EP, I didn't really like like that. Like, I just, okay. I don't know. I just, drill music is not my, really my vibe though. Okay. So maybe that's why. Like, I don't really like drill artists. Okay. Um, what about the um song with Pink Panthers? Do you like that one? Have Boys like, like, I guess they play it so it. much that it's like stuck in my head. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not something I want to download. If that makes sense. Right. But I think she's cool. We had a run in. <laughs> we had a run in at someplace, and um, I was trying to go to work, and she was in the hallway, mm-hmm. and like I was like move but i didn't mean to say move i just no way i didn't mean to say move Wait, like you actually said move just like straight up or like i, I think so because it, it just like under like, your breath or just straight up like i think because so i was waiting but like it was like her taking pictures like of like the hallway and stuff like that Ice but, like, yeah like her people but like i got so you know the elevator is you get off and like oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so like they were i had to go that way like they were blocking that way so was it, to, what, how was the tone or was it like a move no i think it was just like a but i, I had my headphones in so it might have been louder than it then i had it was just bad it, it's just bad because the looks i yeah. got when i said it, they moved but so. yeah i can, I, I can yeah, yeah, as yeah. long as it wasn't like um i mean no no white not. chicks oh yeah no it wasn't, it, wasn't, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that it was not that it wasn't that i was more so i was more so concerned that we're the same height so i was like damn i must be short well does she have on platforms I I didn't, I, it, she's not that tall is she i mean i don't know i'm not gonna let her know her so either way i seen I her mean, like twice she wasn't too tall but i didn't really stand next to her i'm not too tall myself so understandable but i mean listen i don't think that any of the girlies are giving princess of rap nowadays and it's questionable for me on certain days if nikki's even the queen of rap mm. so bing bong <laughs> just i love you nikki please if you ever it's not, it's ever. not hers the bars wait, wait yeah do you guys think that ice spice writes her own bars I don't know what she does. I really, I really don't know. Like I, I really... want to say, okay, because Munch gives me that she wrote it. Like yeah. I can feel that one day because of you know being a pretty girl, it's hard. It's hard on both yeah. sides. Yeah, hard. nothing that. Yeah, nothing, like not. I nothing's understand. wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, I can understand I how she could write Munch. So I want to say yes, based on the simplicity of the other songs as well. But the simplicity, but the catchiness that she did write it. I, I just don't know how that. she's so famous now. She. She's very famous. Yeah, she is. She's kind of just like, which is what industry plant is what they say. I'm, 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 I don't want that. You know, I don't want any of the machines to attack me. I just think okay. it's funny how like the Akbar is like old girls that were like under Nikki's cooch, like did all that, and then like she did it with Ice. Yeah, like, she didn't do it so many of them. Well, okay, can we talk? <laughs> uh, this might be controversial, but. Okay, do you guys think that Nikki is slightly grooming Ice Spice just based off of? how the video was like the video was really fun and cute i don't know did you guys see the yeah, video so, yeah. i thought it was super cute very cute but some of the energy also did give like it, it was just a little weird to me because it's the the way that she sexualized her in that way it didn't give because the big age gap not even, yeah because like why are you did you mm. Okay, so sex you trying to say it i'm getting canceled you trying to say it y'all don't cancel me Okay, sex sells, but why was you grabbing on her in that kind of way? Like, y'all was really about to be out here munching, right, you know? Yeah. Like, there's a way to do it. I feel like she could have been less sexual with, with the video. That's and I feel I'm like saying. Nicki Minaj could have did less. Because Ice Spice was chilling. Facts. She was I feel cute. like Ice Spice didn't really return that same energy as much as Nicki gave yes, to her. Yes, and I think Nikki I mean, probably wasn't allowed. might be sexually attracted to her, though. No, I don't think so. I think Nicki's <clears> just playing the game. If I'm being honest. Wait, is Ice Spice bi? Or is yes. She, oh, she is? Yes. Yes. So that's like another, to that point, it's like, that's even, makes it even more kind of weird that Ice Spice didn't return this that same, like, I, I, feel like I don't think she was allowed to. Not I, weird, but just like. I think Nikki was like, I'm going to, like, I think Nikki has a very strong presence, I feel. Oh, yeah. So I feel like, Dispatch. you know. <laughs> 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 so I feel like, you know, you have to be very particular on when you do certain things around. Ms. Yeah, Minaj. but then uh, you would think that if that was Ice's 
energy behind it too she would return to think she has no problem like rubbing on you and doing all, like yeah. she does those sometimes but i feel like she's more chill and nikki kind of should have just been a little just a notch chiller with it like i didn't need your hand literally mm. on this girl's pussy <laughs> at one point. like come yeah. on like that last couple the, the last couple of scenes was yeah. a little crazy like nikki i don't want to bring agent to it because agent on a butter number but shout out leah right oh r kelly wrote those lyrics <sighs> We won't just, get into that. Just going <laughs> just down. down. Oh, you know what? Thank you guys for yeah. joining us. What the fuck happened this week? I don't want to go no more. Yeah. I don't want to get canceled. We Yo. Oh, man. <laughs> Eli, thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, so fun. Any last questions you'd like to say for us or just in general? Any like last points you would like to make to the people? Uh, what are, yeah, just, just one question. What are your guys' goals? Go ahead, you go first. Mark. I mean, I'm just trying to have my own show that's like produced by myself, and I can kind of like branch off and do like movies, like produce. I want to have my own cologne. I want to have mm -hmm. my own um book. Definitely what, writing a book. What, what would you name the cologne? Ooh, ooh. Uh, I mean, like, unless you don't know yet, then we can just. I don't know the name, but I know the name of my book. But I don't know the name of the cologne. Yet. What's the name of the what? Behind the movement. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's okay. fire. Okay. Um, so I can dive deep into like my whole life, but I also want to do other things. Like I want to work on um, a movie with my grandparents, like their life. I want to call it Ricky and Peaches because their their life is crazy. And um, oh, I met them and I learned about them. It's um, it's, it's yeah. I'm not even gonna put a, a sound because family, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm just trying to take over. You know, just just the world. I feel like it's not a left representation for like young gay black kids and you know the, the life. So. And I do feel like when they do get to a certain point, they're more flamboyant. Not nothing against flamboyant gay men. I just feel like that's really pushed to the um front mm -hmm. when it's in, especially in media. So um, I don't know. Like every time I talk about what I do, they're like, "Oh, you like like Jason Lee?" I'm like, "Oh, excuse me." Let's shout out Jason Lee. Yeah, he, he came up to the Breakfast Club, co-hosted a few times. I don't know how I feel about him because I've been compared to him, and I don't like that. I don't like that. Wait, what do you mean? Like, you don't like being compared to people in general? Just like specifically? Just specifically. I guess I feel like he does a lot with women. And I don't, I don't, that's oh. not my vibe. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know much about like. Yeah, I sorry. don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't. Me personally, I feel like I'm more harder on men than I am on women. Mm. And that's just me. But I feel like a lot of men, maybe gay men, are really hard on women. I'm not that hard on women because I don't I don't have a pussy. So I don't know how you mm. do what oh you do. God. So I'm just saying. But as far as a man, I have a dick. You have a dick. Like, we can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But I feel like some gay men in particular sometimes go super harder on women. I don't, I don't like that. Now, if it's you getting cute, we can go back and forth. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I, for, with him, I've seen a lot of different things that he said about, like, Ariana or, like, or Normani or somebody. Like, you know, like, I don't like that. So that's just my opinion. Again, I've never met him before, so I don't know his vibe in real life. I just feel like sometimes when people see him, they're like, like he just, he's messy. Um... And I, I I can be messy, but you know when people see me on or off the show, like on this show is like whatever, but off the show I'm pretty you know chill and quiet. Yeah. So that is true. That's understandable. Ooh, I just hit money on the table. We're gonna edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> what if we don't? <laughs> as far as me, so that this question is actually like shifting in my life right now because I thought that I was just gonna maybe continue down the path of working in the animal industry, but I'm definitely tapping back into my roots, which is radio. Shout out to Lamarck for kind of like, mm, come back to this side. <laughs> um, also, I DJ. That's something I didn't get to talk to you about, but I do DJ. I actually just finished my third mix, you guys. Hey. So, Sad um, Girl Music Volume 1 is coming out today, actually, when I get out of this show. We gotta figure out when this shit drops. Are you so I do a lot of different genres. Like I, I put out a, <clears throat> an edit the other day, and it was house and Jersey Club mixed together. Bye. This one is like more R and B and alternative hey, fusion. R and B's not dead. Yeah, it's really it'll not. never die. It's never dying. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Really, mm -hmm. I really like you. He's great. He's great. He's dope, right? Yeah. Um. But also, I want to get into project management, get back into creative management, mm -hmm. um, and just really shift my way back over to that field. I just finished getting certified in the foundations of project management. So I'm just hey. really taking me wanting to elevate my career seriously. And I'm okay with it ending up anywhere as long as it's with something that I'm passionate about, which is a multitude of things. So mm -hmm. there's different lanes that I feel like will make me happy and fulfill me. And, you know, 
Hopefully, I get to do a set sometime soon. That's a goal. I'm a goal. Yeah. With so. God's good grace. Yeah. Amen to that. Hopefully. We could do a live show or some shit. That'd be fun. Absolutely. There's actually, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that too. Oof. Yeah. We'll, we'll make That's, it happen. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure some shit yeah, out. Yeah, shout out to Eli. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. I'm looking forward to episode two of The Heartbreak. I can't wait to see it. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I get my emotional we tears get ready. ready for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'll be dropping next. I don't know when the fuck this is even gonna come out. We gotta figure out a, a release date. Yeah, we're date. dropping in May for sure. Yeah, for sure. For we sure. just gotta figure out a date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also if we have a couple other little things in the yeah. works to make it a little more spicy. Yeah, yeah. a little more throw spicy. Some, some yeah, throw some sauce. Be like, let people know your Instagram, your TikTok. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so my Instagram, you can follow me at OVO Eli. Um, mm -hmm. TikTok Old Soul OVO. Um, and yeah, also have a YouTube channel NYC Eli. Nice. Okay, what do you do on your YouTube channel? Just let people know. Uh, vlogs. Okay, vlogs. vlogs. For the most part, um, music reviews and stuff. Or I, I like do a whole bunch of stuff. It's just like a broad spectrum of um, like current pop culture stuff. Okay, you uh, you'll see dope. some Drake stuff there. Too, okay, of course. got it. And last question: the favorite, the most favorite guest I guess you ever had or experienced on um, the Breakfast Club? Yeah, just yeah, you know, well, yeah, yeah, why not. <laughs> wait, wait, you said or not? <laughs> or not, yeah. I mean, we can make it. I'm gonna edit it the way it's good. Like, so. <laughs> Most favorite guest thing I have one. Um fuck. Um there's so many. Uh waiting on Drake. Um, okay, oof. Bryson Tiller, okay. Frank Ocean. Like, I'm waiting on all these people I'm named. T Tory Lanez came up before the whole cancellation. Um, 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 I was a fan of him, but you know, that's the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was definitely cool. Uh, oh, P. Diddy came up. Um, oh, Division. That was mm. like, a cool, mm. cool duo. Um, How was Diddy? He was cool. He was, he had that. I see why he calls himself love. He had that good energy. That's that, good. Like, you could kind of feel it. Um, his son also came, Sean Combs, shout out King Combs. Um, I love to have a talk with Diddy about stuff. Honestly, yeah. He got some keys, man. Yeah. You can say what you want, but he's got a blueprint for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, damn, I feel like I know. It's just, I mean, I named, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Few, yeah. I was going to say who was the worst, but I don't know if you're going to say mm. it. Who was the worst? Like, damn. If you could. Who was the worst? Like their attitude was just out of this world. And I know you have one. Uh like do you mean like towards me or just on the show? Like both. It's tough because even some some uh guests that we had that were good on a, in an interview or like in person, I don't like their energy, but like um for both, that's a tough one. Cause they're usually, you know, pretty mm -hmm. calm when it comes to the inter because mm -hmm. it's you know it's yeah. interviews. But um Or even if there's one that took you off guard, like they were worse than you thought they were gonna be. Like they aren't how you thought they would be. Fat Joe. Mm. Oh really? I met him. And he was such a pleasure. Yeah, it might have just been me, like not like introducing myself or anything, but it's just kind of like uh... it was. It was weird vibes. Weird. Maybe I don't know if he was like in a rush, had like a hard out or something like that. But uh, he, I think he'll be back soon. But maybe I'll have that opportunity, to, like really get to feel his vibe. Okay. Um, but we had we had nothing but good vibes, genuine vibes for the most part. Um, nobody really um, given that negative. I mean, Jim Jones came up uh, very recently, and it was a very uh, you know passionate like he's interview. Wrong. Yeah, but he he backed Drake, <laughs> so I I can't hate on him. <laughs> he also shit on Pusha T, so <laughs> nothing that against seems Pusha like T. Like a common thing nowadays. I mean, yeah, he's beefing with with T, but you know mm. that's, that's the whole of the conversation. Too. Well, thank you, Eli, yeah, for coming on the show. You, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And um, make sure you guys follow him, support him, and we'll see you guys next time on the Mark After Dark. Take care.